Now then, my name is Ryan Central and we have an Anthem video. We actually have some news on the game coming from the live stream that happened today, going over the Cataclysm, what to expect there, as well as some other Dataman stuff around it, new armor sets, all that stuff, and that's what we're going over today. Before we get started though, a brief shout out to Elgato, who recently sent me a stream deck to play with, not one of the massive XL ones that you've been seeing and shown on screen, but they've still been really good and fun to play with, but we'll talk about those a little bit more later in the video. So the major thing that came out of the live stream was some more information and gameplay of what a Cataclysm looks like. It's effectively more of a game mode where you have a certain amount of time, you have certain areas on a map that you want to get to, complete objectives, earn points as you've seen on the right hand side, and basically just get as many points as you can within the 15 minutes, or whether you finish the event early by killing the final boss, which I believe is called Vera. You're of course in the middle of a storm, so you need to shoot these rift things in order to create safe spots, which allow you to be able to do certain missions and bits and pieces like that. And if you don't shoot those rifts, you will take damage from the storm and keep dying over and over. And as you've seen from a glimpse at the map, you can see that there's different areas that you can go to. You can try and do all of the different areas, but because you're on a time limit, you want to be as fast as possible. The good things about it is that it looks beautiful, um, really, like the sort of design of the storm and then the area below. Of course, this is on like the PTS, this is on the test server, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. But basically, it's not done yet. It's very early iterations, um, which is disappointing considering we were meant to get the Cataclysm complete at the end of this month, at least. But generally, it does look really nice and really solid. And it's certain to say that the game mode is very unique in how it's designed. But I guess the issue is it doesn't feel like aspirational content you know this kind of raid content that we're sort of expecting at this point with some high-end rewards speaking of which loot was mentioned but we'll go over that in a second i do have a few concerns just generally on how popular the game mode is going to be how much fun it is going to be the replayability factors whether it's really going to dig their claws into the players to keep them playing that's the thing I'm not too sure on because the gameplay looks fairly straightforward in terms of how it works. But again, I just sort of need to get my hands on it first to see how long I can play it before I get bored. But this is kind of how it looks in the background. They enabled god mode so they can fly around the map and really show it off. But that's certainly the first concern that comes to mind. This isn't a raid. This isn't looking like high-end boss content. It looks more of a gimmicky game mode, which is a little bit concerning for me personally. Some other important things that they mentioned is that look has been removed completely from the game. It's less it's getting removed and that everybody's getting full look with any look stats that you have on gear being changed to armor. So basically everybody should get more drops naturally because of that and be less involved and having to run luck on their gear which i think is a good thing i think luck was a terrible stat to add to the game and really shouldn't have been added in the first place so this is a nice change but they also mentioned a few things about loot which i think is important to sort of mention the first area is that there are going to be new abilities weapons masterwork stuff added into the game as you're seeing from the screenshot as well as melee equipable slots. So each of the javelins might have new weapons to play with that might do different things. For example, the ranger, instead of having a melee ability that primes the target, you can change it to detonate, which I think would be a really cool thing to add. But I guess most importantly, all of these new items will have a higher power level than existing items. Currently the masterworks of legendary versions are five item levels higher. So it should mean that they're a lot stronger. With any luck, there's lots more weapons and masterwork gear that you could equip in order to make your javelin a lot stronger but of course the problem with this is it's not really talking about how the loot and progression system works it's just talking about the loot drops which was kind of frustrating um it kind of felt like bioware didn't really know what we were complaining about i guess to an extent but they did talk about something that really caught my interest instead of me just repeating it this is what they had to say about war chests and the currency that you earn from doing the cataclysm yep um, but the idea is uh, the Cataclysm is a, a six week long event, like we said, uh, and you earn currency by participating in the event. So that could be doing the Cataclysm itself earns you some currency, um, doing the daily weekly challenges for the, the game in general will earn you some currency. Uh, and then in Fort Tarsus, there'll be a new vendor uh, and you can go to that vendor and spend currency uh, on rewards. And so they'll come in the form of war chests. Um, and I think once we have that uh, available before we patch that into PTS, we'll probably mm -hmm. do another stream or we'll do something yeah. and we can kind of explain how that works. But the core concept is you 
play the game, participate in the event, earn a bunch of currency, and then you spend that currency um, on the war chests, and um, the things that are available in the war chests will change throughout the event. Um, so for example, at the beginning of the event, it will be like the new melee items will be the thing that you can, the things you can purchase uh, from the event vendor. Yep. So the score system that you have in the Cataclysm goes towards a currency, which will have a new vendor in Fort Tarsis, and you could use these to buy war chests. The term war chests kind of worries me because it feels like it would be more of a loot box and kind of like the Elysian caches, but it does sound to an extent like you can buy what you want, specifically being able to buy the melee weapons to begin with, which I think is quite cool. You know, the ability to grind towards getting certain weapons that you can earn as opposed to just playing the game and hoping that they drop. The issue is, again, if the Cataclysm isn't very fun to play three, four hours in, then it's not going to be fun to grind for these weapons. It does sound like you can do other things, such as just normal legendary missions and dailies and contracts and that, but you kind of get the point that I'm trying to make. It's like the replayability of the game is kind of suffering because we haven't had new content really added in. So having something that forces you to grind that content might be a bit damaging, I suppose. It's really hard to say. The community is still umming and ahhing. Of course, there will be people that will hate the system, but I think it's too early to really say whether these changes that we've just spoken about would be better or worse for the game. The other final thing that I wanted to add were inversions, and these are effectively affixes. These are things that will mostly positively change uh, your get up and your loadout and stuff. For example, you might have an inversion that increases SMG damage times two, you know, doubles that damage. So you might want to run specific builds depending on the week and what the affixes are. So I think that's quite cool. It enables you to change up your gear based on what's happening at the moment. And again, it just gives us an opportunity to mix and match different things as opposed to going, oh, this is the best in slot. I'm not going to change this at all. I hope that they do a lot more with our fixes. And I guess mostly when it comes to the cataclysm, I just hope that it's, you know, challenging, that it is aspirational content, that it does require you to play hard, to really, you know, get as much out of it as you can for GM3 especially, and being able to get the good gear for it. If people are just grinding out GM1 because the gear's the same, then we're right back to square one. But that's everything that they spoke about today, but there's still loads more to go over. With that said though, we have some new data mined armors. I know that you guys absolutely love this stuff and with good reason and these armor sets are actually quite good there isn't any for the interceptor though which of course is very frustrating but the ones that we do have are quite cool we have this one for the colossus the powerhouse of course you can change the color schemes and all that stuff but it doesn't seem to have a helmet at all or whether it's kind of this thing at the front of it I'm not too sure. We then have this one for the Ranger, which I think is called Chitinius. And I like the sort of scar feel that this one has as well. The Ranger already has a scar sort of themed armor set, but I do like the antennas on this one. And I still enjoy playing Ranger more than any of the others, apart from maybe Interceptor. We then have Excavator for the Colossus, which again is a pretty cool skin. Um, not sure if I'd buy any of these, especially for the price that they all are, but um, they're still pretty cool and no doubt some of you guys will really dig what these skins are. But the stone one is also really cool, this onyx one. You have like the happy eyes on the side going on, but I still think it's a really cool set and the storm especially has some really good armor sets as a whole. We also have some reps which I'll show on screen as we start talking about some of the other stuff, mainly surrounding EA Play and E3. There's been a lot of confusion, especially when it comes to leaks and all of the information being thrown out there about what Anthem is going to be doing at E3 or EA Play. Anthem was down to appear at E3, which of course wasn't true because all of EA's games are doing their own little E3 a week before E3, if that makes sense. Think of it like EA trying to do their own BlizzCon with games there like Battlefield, The Sims, Apex Legends, of course, and Anthem. But the issue that people have been spotting is that Anthem doesn't have a live stream slot like the rest of the games. And considering this event is based around, to quote, live stream extravaganzas, Anthem has zero presence there. So the fact that Anthem doesn't have a live stream slot at this live stream extravaganza, I would say is a very good sign to be honest. But AJ had this to say on the subject of EA Play. Getting a lot of questions about it, so I want to clarify the Anthem game will still be a part of the EA Play this year. It's not part of the EA Play live stream run of show released today because we have a stream planned tomorrow, which of course just happened, from here at Bioware. More news tomorrow. With that said though, like I've said a couple of times, I will be going to EA Play next week. 
So I am also kind of nervous that there's not going to be much Anthem related stuff there to be shown. Uh, with any luck, there's some new patch work going on. But yeah, considering Anthem doesn't feel like it's got a major presence at EA Play, it's a bit of a big problem, I think. Especially considering I'm going to it in a week, I would be very frustrated if I went all that way and there's very little information or stuff to do in regards to Anthem there. And whilst it is a good opportunity to go to LA again and check it out and stuff, it would be a massive shame to go all that way with no new information or stuff to show off. Now we need to talk about yesterday's news, as there's still some pretty important stuff that we haven't yet covered. We'll finish with the patch because let's be honest, the patch was not really that exciting, but we did get some more information on the PTS, which is the public test server, which should be going out fairly soon. In fact, I think it might be going out before this weekend, going off some other information. But first we'll go over what Jesse had to say. It was an update that came out yesterday with the patch notes and stuff. They said, speaking of the cataclysm, you're probably wondering when it's going to release. Of course, we've got more information about it just now. But they also put, rather than rush it out the door, we want to take time and get feedback from you and make changes based on what we hear. In order to do that, we are releasing a public test server on PC, which will allow you to see the content as it's been developed and gives you the ability to provide feedback. While this won't immediately solve all of the current issues, we want to continue to hear from you as we make improvements to Anthem, and the PTS is a great way to do that. And that's exactly it, the PTS is a really good idea for Anthem that constantly keeps putting out patches and accidentally breaking the game in regards to a lot of stuff. This of course is just with anything, when they expand a build from a test server that Bioware play on themselves, maybe even other members of EA, and then put it out to hundreds of thousands of people on different networks on different pcs there's going to be issues i'm not defending how badly these patches go out but you have to understand that this is kind of the problem with anthem at the moment i've been seeing a few people complain that they're having to go and test stuff but to be honest a good portion of very popular games online have ptrs overwatch world of warcraft i'm playing the classic beta right now to test stuff out you know what i mean so there's a lot of stuff that uses these kind of public test servers in order to try stuff out and it's really good for us content creators as well to get an upper hand on new stuff as it's been released instead of waiting for it to come out and then it being buggy like i said we might be seeing this very soon as a few people on origin have been able to get into preloads of the public test server with freighter on the subreddit saying that the public test realm is in their library of games in fact, me checking, it's also there with the preload time and release date that's happening tomorrow at 3 p.m. BST. So we might be getting the practice test servers tomorrow, quite early on, with any luck trying out the stuff that was shown on the live stream tonight. So yeah, some pretty cool stuff. It's nice to have Anthem putting out regular content again, and with EA Play around the corner, maybe we'll start to get some, you know, new content, new patches, but most importantly, loot changes. Let's be honest, none of this means anything if Bioware haven't fixed how loot works in this game. And I do think that's going to be over certain iterations. It's not going to be like one week they just put out a patch that fixes everything. I think they're going to fix loot over time to make it more bearable and then put in a better system um, as time goes on but i think it's going to be like six months before we fully get the new loot system you know but we'll get bits and pieces of it a month at a time and of course finally we have the actual patch notes themselves i saved this to last because let's be honest these patch notes are pretty dull in terms of the content and fixes that they have but as bioware admitted they said themselves that this is more under the hood changes quality of life stuff and there's some good quality of life stuff in here for free play, you have the compass showing you collectible items with question marks and then also showing targets that are guaranteed to drop loot as purple target icons there too. You can also fast travel between different strider locations whilst in free play, which is a nice addition. They've also added free Emerald Abyss missions to the legendary mission table, which is good because these missions are pretty decent themselves, I do think. And I've also added a chat wheel, which is cool. Tried this out a bit myself, and it's a really nice addition. It's not quite a text chat, but it's somewhere in between being able to say thank you for resing me, or hey, come this way, or just hello, you know, people running up to me and waving and then emoting in my face. It's great, it feels really good. And as I said, the rest of it isn't worth mentioning. The only notable thing to really go over is gear changes. All of the different javelins have had base damage increases to a number of abilities, but the thing that they all have in common is that none of the 
them are combo abilities. They're not detonators, they're not primers. The intercept, for example, you have the plasma star, the rave strike, all having their base damage increased. Same for the Colossus Ranger and Storm. So that's by where trying to bump up these abilities to make them a little bit stronger and give you reason to actually use them. Because let's be honest, if they're not combo abilities, they are not worth using. With any luck, they add some loot system in that they can change uh, abilities to be primers or detonators to make it a little bit more exciting. And just give you the ability to play with stuff like a plasma star to make it much more interesting than you throwing a star at an enemy and doing a bit of damage, you know? With that said though, that is everything in terms of news that I wanted to go over, so I did want to talk about the state of the game currently and where I am with it. And I'll be honest, I'm at my wit's end with Anthem. There's been a reason why I haven't really made much content, even though Bioware haven't said anything for the past month or so. I've just not been really interested in the game. I've been playing so little of it because it's repetitive, the loot and progression system is pretty dull and just not fun to be a part of. And there's so many better games that are out or coming out that do this a lot better that's worth your time more. I'm not going to sit and flack at the game when I could be playing classic WoW, you know what I mean, and having so much more fun there. Bioware really need to step up. I know that they've been working hard from my own personal experience and knowing them. There's a lot of stuff that's not been announced yet that they've been working on, and I know that they've been working hard, but stuff like the radio silence, for example, and just how the game got to the state in the first place is really unacceptable. I've seen a couple of other like EA game changers and other content creators apologizing for covering the game at all. And whilst yes, I do feel liable for those of getting people hype, I apologize for getting people excited for this game, but I didn't know that it was in this state. I think there was this perception that us game changers knew that the game wasn't very good, yet we tried to hype it up anyway. That wasn't true. And hindsight is 2020. Would I have covered this game back in September when I started knowing what I know now? Probably not. But I'm still hoping that the game can turn this around because the game can be exceptional in the looter shooter genre if it can fix its glaring progression and loot issues. The new content that they've been putting out has been good, but it's the minutia and everything surrounding the game that's a problem. Not so much the new content as it's been put out. Not to mention it performs like ass on my PC, like 100% CPU. And just because of that, it's really sort of depressing, I suppose, to play and talk about this game. And understandably, YouTubers get a lot of flack for even mentioning it. It's kind of why I've been bouncing around other games like Borderlands 3, which I'll cover when the game comes out, I do think. But I do want to focus on Anthem. I want that to be my game to cover. Bioware and EA and Anthem just isn't really letting me right now. So I'm sure most of you understand. We'll end on a lighter note. Let's talk about the Elgato Stream Deck. They have recently announced the big XL 32 button version. I have the 15 button version that I got recently. And even then that's more than enough. I kind of want to do a little Twitter video, maybe sometime showing off some of the cool stuff that you could do with it. It's not only great for switching scenes in OBS, but also opening up websites, opening up programs, muting my microphone on everything, on Discord, on stream. It also affects my Philips Hue lights that are on in the background of streams if you've been there twitch.tv forward slash ride central if you haven't already and i could also mess with stuff like spotify it's just a really good utility tool that could do so much more than you would have expected so if you want to check them out there is a link in the description below i'm really in love with it and stream deck and elgato make some pretty awesome stuff the lights and so I'm definitely keen to show it off to you more. But that's everything that I wanted to go over in today's video. It's been a pretty long one, to be honest, but we've had quite a lot to catch up on. We got the PTS coming very shortly by the looks of things. And with any luck, this is the point where Anthem starts to turn things around. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.